I'd like to have a look at libraries, folders and files. But before we do so, we need to address the fact that there are two experiences or views that you will encounter in SharePoint Online. These two views are either called classic or new, and they appear when you're in certain parts of your SharePoint site. For example, if I'm in Documents, which you see here, Documents, Pages, Site Contents or the Recycle Bin, I have the option to switch between classic and new experience. Let's click on documents for example. To switch to the classic experience or the classic view, what you'll find is you'll have an option down here towards the bottom of the quick launch and it's called return to classic SharePoint. So I'm going to click this option. When I do so, you'll see that the look of this particular library has changed substantially and this is the classic experience or the classic view. To exit the classic experience and return to the new experience, we simply click this option again below the quick launch. And that takes us back to the new experience. So be aware that there's two types of experiences or views when you're in SharePoint. And if things look a little different, it may be that you've switched into classic and you may wish to return to the new view. Now it is possible if you create your own library or your own list, as that library or list owner, you can actually set the default view and whether they can switch or not. And this is possible if we go to the gear button, which is this little gear looking icon or flower looking icon. If we click this and then we go into library settings or list settings, depending on what you're working with, you're able to then choose advanced settings. And if I choose the advanced settings right here, I'll then be able to scroll down to the list experience. And here's the list experience. At the moment, by default, I choose to view the new experience, but I can by default make it the classic experience, or I can actually default the experience to whatever the administrator prefers. So I'm going to leave mine on new and just click cancel. So as we work with libraries and as we work with lists, it's important to know which view you're in. I'm also now going to exit out of this um, area here by going back to site contents in my quick launch. And now I'm back to here. Now at this point, I'd like to look at the fact that there's a variety of libraries that you can have. Probably the most common library is this option here in the quick launch called the Documents Library. The Documents Library is the most common library because this is where we basically organize and share documents within this team site. But a library is a location on a site, a SharePoint site, where you can upload, create, update and collaborate on files with other members of that site. Document libraries hold Excel files, Word files, PDF files, pretty much any type of document. But there are other types of libraries also in SharePoint sites. If I, for example, click the Site Contents option in my Quick Launch, I can see that there are a variety of libraries. Here, for example, is my Documents library. And here is a library called Site Assets, Site Pages, and you may even have a pictures library. If you don't have a pictures library, you can actually add a pictures library simply by clicking the new button and then clicking the app option. In this particular screen, I can choose to install a variety of libraries, including another document library, both here and here. There's even form libraries and wiki page libraries, which we'll get into later. But if I want a picture library which is specially built to manage pictures and to show thumbnails and to give you extra sort of metadata regarding pictures, then I'll click this option here. I'm then asked to give this picture library a name, so I'm just going to call it Pictures. And when I click Create, I've created a picture library in my site contents. And here it is here. And here it is explains that it's a picture library and at the moment it has zero items in it. So we've got a documents library, if I click that, with 20 documents in it of all different types. I think at the moment it's about 300 different file types that are supported. 
but if I actually then go back to site contents I can then see that I've now also not only got a documents library but I've got a pictures library and I can upload all my pictures into there so that they're in one place and there's an upload option. But if I go back to site contents you may also notice that you've actually got a site assets library as well and that's this one here. The site assets library comes with every SharePoint site and it's basically a place or a library where we store all our working files and content like logos and OneNote notebooks. It's almost like a sort of dumping ground for everything that you use to build your SharePoint site and a lot of things automatically will go into the site assets library. So if I go and have a look, for example, here's the Northwind Traders logo, here's the OneNote notebook that goes with this particular site, and there's even more site pages in here. But if I go back to site contents, that's the dumping ground called site assets, currently got 10 items, um, for everything used to build the SharePoint site. And then the other library that's common to most SharePoint sites is the site pages. Now the site pages, as, is, as it implies, is a library where all the pages are kept. So for example, here's my home page. And any news that I see on my home page is appearing here also as pages. So if you wanted to create a new page or delete a page, you would go to site pages and manage it there. So for example, if I went to the home page, um, page and I didn't like this winter catalogue release, I could literally go to pages, find the winter catalogue release which is there, select it and I could actually choose to delete it. So site pages are created and managed in this particular library and site contents lets us see all of these libraries.